What's going on, you guys? So believe it or not, the amount of turning, flexing, bending, rotating you do on a daily basis actually puts an insane amount of stress on your back muscles. I mean, even sitting for an extended period of time can put a high amount of stress on your back. And yes, I'm talking to you college students and people with sedentary desk jobs. This definitely includes you. So to put it in the simplest terms, the more and more you exercise and condition your the muscles in your back, the lower the risk you are at experiencing any back pain or any type of back related injuries. So I'm going to explain to you guys what it means to have a strong back, what it can do for you in terms of all of your other exercises and your day to day activities. What's going on, you guys? Thank you very much for tuning in to AJ Fitness right here on YouTube. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. So, like I said, we're going to be talking about what it means to have a strong back, what it can do for you, and how it can uh, benefit all of your other exercises when it comes to strength. One of the first things you need to understand is having flexibility in your back is majorly important, especially if you hit the weight room habitually. But before we talk about back flexibility in the weight room, let's talk about your back flexibility uh, during a day-to-day -day basis. Now you may think that since you've been doing the same thing every single day for X amount of years of your life, that you shouldn't experience any sort of back pain because your back is used to it. You know, it's, it's doing the same thing every single day and you know, muscle memory takes over and your back has adapted to your lifestyle. Well, unfortunately, that is not the way it works. Your diet fluctuates, your weight fluctuates, you get older. There, you know, there's an endless amount, there's an endless list of, of catalysts that have an effect on your physical ability. So what am I saying when it comes to having proper flexibility in your back? So let's say that you've been doing the same thing for years and years and suddenly you do something just a little bit different. You have to lift something a little bit heavier or you have to move in a way that your body isn't quite necessarily used to. Because the muscles in your back are not flexible physically and functionally, you open yourself up to any type of stress-related injury or any sort of back pain. Now let's talk about what it does for you in the weight room. And let's use deadlifts as our example exercise. Let's say Joe Schmo comes in and he knows that he's the strongest guy in the gym, hands down. He's going to go do some 800 pound deadlifts and he's not going to have a problem at all. So not only is his life boring as hell, his body has been conditioned to do one thing and that is perform deadlifts. When it comes to the strength and flexibility in his back, the only thing his back is used to is deadlifts, nothing else. So Joe Schmo is feeling extra adventurous today and after doing 10 sets of 800 pound deadlifts, he decides to do some overhead barbell presses as well. He puts 200 pounds on the bar, goes to push it over his head, and he pulls a muscle in his back and he's out at the gym for three and a half weeks. This happened because Joe's back was only conditioned in one aspect and that was to perform deadlifts. His back is not conditioned to do overhead presses. His back is not conditioned to perform squats or anything else. There are only certain parts of his back and the rest of his body that have the ability to lift uh, a lot of weight during a deadlift. Everything else has fallen behind. The functionality of his back muscles are minimal because he only works his back in one aspect. And that's the message I'm trying to give you guys. You need to be working at your back in every single direction, uh, movement, anything, every way possible. Because you never know when the day will come where you need to call on your back muscles to help you lift something or move a certain way. And if your back is in condition to do so, you are very, very likely going to hurt yourself. So even if you are somebody who doesn't go to the gym as much as I do, or you just really don't go to the gym at all, you need to find a way to keep your back flexible and well-conditioned. 
if you take a look at a muscular anatomy chart, you'll see that the back anatomy, the muscles in your back, are directly connected to every other part of your body. For example, your lower back is directly connected with your hips and your hamstrings. If your back, if your lower back isn't properly conditioned, you are more susceptible to having some type of hip injury or pulling a hamstring. Another example would be your upper back, which is connected directly with your shoulders. If your upper back isn't properly conditioned to, to support the stress you put on your shoulders, you could be looking at a shoulder injury and therefore you probably won't be able to bench press. You, you won't be able to work out your chest. You guys see what I'm saying there? Just look at a muscular anatomy chart, look at the muscles in the back, and just understand how and why the muscles in your back are so complex. And from there, I'm sure you guys will completely understand what it means to have a well-conditioned back. So like I said earlier, the muscles in your back are responsible for maintaining proper structure of your spine. So if you're someone with bad posture, you can easily improve your posture by incorporating some simple back exercises that will help build the strength and condition your back overall. So that's it for this video, you guys. I know I've said in the past that my favorite body part to work out is my back, but in no way am I trying to be biased towards just making a video focused on the back. It's what I learned from working out my back. I've learned the, uh, the benefits of maintaining proper strength and conditioning for the muscles in my back. Anyway, thank you guys again for tuning in to AJ Fitness. If you haven't already, subscribe to AJ Fitness right here on YouTube. Like our Facebook fan page, you guys. And I am also on Twitter and Instagram, at Fitness with AJ.